Yum, yum! Hello Motonauts, this tutorial is going to cover the V-Ray switch material, which is going to allow us to put different materials on a bunch of different items here. So here I've got not just different colors, but different materials, right? A metallic material, a frosted glass material, and a plastic material on these buttons in addition to various colors. So we can wrap all that up into just one you know, tidy little group here, and I'll show you how that's done. This uh, majestic pile of buttons was created with uh, Moto's physics, and I'll probably do a follow-up tutorial with that. And that's using the dynamic replicator, um, and I'll probably link to that to the bottom once I get this one done. Anyway, let's go back to our merged button group, and this is just all one mesh. So this is the dynamics of a bunch of replicated buttons and freezing that, basically merging those using the merge meshes uh, node into one mesh and freezing that. Uh, deleting the buttons I didn't like, and then we're going to um, go from there. So that's how we got this one uh, merged buttons um, uh, mesh item here. And really how we get to the colors is pretty simple. So I suppose I should delete what I've done and start over from scratch so everybody can follow along. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I've got a big pile of white buttons now, just boring white buttons. Um, and so I need to add a V-Ray switch material. So V-Ray materials, V-Ray switch material to my button mask. Of course, these buttons have a polygon material tag called button on them. And my buttons disappear, which is no big deal. I just don't have any materials assigned to the switch material yet. But I do need to go to the schematic and we'll be doing all of our work here in the schematic. So I'm just gonna drag this bad boy in here. There's our V-Ray switch material. And then I'm gonna start adding some V-Ray materials, just a standard V-Ray material. And here it is. And I'm going to plug it into slot number zero. And I'm going to um, minimize it here. And I have my white buttons back. And I'm going to call this guy plastics over here. You'll notice that any materials or textures I add uh, this way into the schematic show up in this nodes folder here in the shader tree, which is nice. So I've got my plastics. And I'm going to uh, duplicate that and plug it into the second one here and call this um, metals, metals. For whatever reason, I cannot control D duplicate a V-Ray material in the uh, schematic. I have to do it over here. So I don't know why it doesn't let you do that like you can with the standard node, but you cannot. So hovering over the shader tree, control D duplicate and we'll call our metals glass and hook that into the third slot and minimize it there. Then I'm just going to add a V-Ray. How about a car paint texture? Any uh, material, V-Ray material, a car paint material. Any V-Ray material, subsurface scattering, car paint, standard, whatever, you can plug into the switch material. So I'll just do a car paint. Plug that into the bottom one. Now, the trick is, how does the switch material know which button to give which material? That's the trick, right? So it has another node down, or uh, input to the node called input value. It also has a bump and normal map inputs. If you want to apply bump or normal map um, across the board on all those materials, you could do that. Uh, we're not going to do that, but you can if you want to. So if you have like, you know, whatever, different rocks, you know, metal rocks, plastic rocks, glass rocks, and you have one rock bump you want on top of that, it'll add it to everything. The input value is what we want to deal with here. And I want the standard moto variation texture. That is going to grab us the information from the scene that we need to divide up these materials onto these buttons. So. The variation texture is in our scene. I want to do a couple of things. I want to make sure this variation source is not set to particle, it's set to mesh part. Because I'm dealing with one mesh item with a bunch of uh, polygon islands, right? Each uh, button is a polygon island or a separate mesh part. And I want to plug texture value into input value. And lastly, I want to edit the gradient and I want to make sure the value right here, the value, has some keyframes on it, not just a solid value of one, but a you know normalized between zero and one. So zero should be zero, and uh, 100 should be 100, and I just like to make that linear. And what this will do, let's say we have 100 buttons, and they're all along the bottom here. Each percent is its own button. And we've got four materials plugged into, into the side. So materials will be the first one, this plastics one will be between zero and 25. So, you know, buttons zero to 25, will get zero to 25 of, of plastics. Metals will be like 25 to 50, it'll get these buttons here. And then, you know, again, car paint and glass will get get those buttons. So that's, one, that's how you can sort of visualize it. This is the material, this is the buttons, or maybe it's the other way around, either way. 
that's how it works. So you got to make sure it's set to mesh part. You make sure you have a linear gradient in here and value is hooked up. Now, if I had been using um, a replicator like I had in my physics simulation, you know, each button is, uh, a, is a prototype attached to a particle fed into a replicator, then I would be using my replicator, my particle variation source, uh, mesh part. You'd use the particle ID to assign one of these materials. So particle IDs are all between zero and one as well. So a particle ID of 66 would give me the glass material. So, you know, button number 66 would get the glass material. But we are using mesh parts for this particular exercise. So that is set up. We'll call this variation texture uh, switch. That's what it's plugged into. And then I'm going to go in and start refining my actual uh, materials here. So um, real quick, I'm just going to give them colors so we can kind of see what's going on. We're going to plastics. We have metals. We'll make green. One of the things we have to do when working with the variation texture in a V-Ray schematic and using the V-Ray um, interactive renderer, unfortunately, is we're going to have to hit refresh a number of times. So just really quickly, let me just give some colors here and uh, car paint. Um, nice red car paint, maybe. Let me change plastics back to uh, green. Anyway, if I hit uh, refresh, it'll get that information from the variation texture and refresh my scene here, which is unfortunate. Uh, hopefully that can be fixed in an upcoming version, but right now we have to refresh to get that data in there. But as you can see, I must have a couple of different greens. Yeah, so metals, let me make uh, orange. So we've got orange metals, red uh, with car paint and green with the plastic and what's glass, uh, the blue. So you can see that we've got sort of an even distribution of these four and then we can go in and start refining these materials a little more. Um, if you don't wanna see me refine the materials, you can really just stop the tutorial right here. That's essentially how you do it and uh, using the variation texture and the switch material. Um, but if you want, I'll just go ahead and refine these materials. You can see if you haven't watched any of the other videos I do on, on plastics or metals or glass, this could be useful for you as well. So plastics have a reflection color. Just you know, hold shift and drag across, get that up to white. Uh, plastics really do have a white or near white reflection color. Uh, the refractive index is fine. Uh, IOR is fine. 1.6 is fine for plastics. Um, and roughness, or I'm sorry, glossiness in V-Ray is the opposite of roughness. So a one glossiness is like a zero roughness in Moto. And for plastics, they're pretty dang glossy typically unless they're satin or something. But we'll just go to 0.9. It's pretty good to roughen those hot highlights up a little bit. And then I'm going to use the variation texture again uh, in the um, for the color of the plastic. So I could take my variation texture switch over here and just control D duplicate and call this variation texture plastic. And there it is. And I'm just going to do the texture color to the diffuse color like that. And then I'm going to edit this. Make sure we have the RGB selected and middle mouse click and give this a color, give this a color, middle mouse, maybe a blue and middle mouse again, maybe, oh, I don't know, like a nice yellow button. And a lot of times I'll like to, instead of having this gradient in here and getting these sort of ugly grays in between, I'll just change these to stepped. So I just get these colors, right? Now, one thing you'll notice is, you know, all of these button colors are just uh, actually, you'll notice they're black. And again, this is um, going back to the refresh issue. I need to refresh to pick up this new information. And so I will refresh, refreshing, gathering in the variation textures information. And now that's in there. They're all green. And why is that? Um, you'll notice that green goes between zero and like 40. Well, because plastic, there's four, again, there's four materials. Let's just pretend there's 100 buttons, the first, you know, four of them, the first 25% of those material or buttons uh, are plastic. So only 25% of these are plastic. And so I need to keep these variation colors within zero to 25. So I can do that by, by selecting all of them and holding control and right mouse click dragging uh, down to 25. Actually, I want it just a little bit inside of 25. So here we go. So we've got some pinky ones and some yellow ones and some blue ones and some green ones. And you can see that I've got you know, the, I'm getting that one here and I'm getting this one on this end. So I'm getting all of those colors now. And that's gonna have to be that way for all of these, right? So if I go to metals next and uh, select metals, just scroll that down. 
metals, you want black, diffuse color because it gets the color from the reflection color. So bent, you know, put that up and let's change this to GGX, which is a better BRDF type for metals. And glossiness, maybe 0.85. I like my metals a little bit blurry on the reflections. You can see this happening here a little bit. Um, you know, reflection color, I'll just change this to like coppery for now. Kind of see what's going on. And with metals, whoops, with metals, you want to turn off for now reflections. So it's now starting to look a little bit like copper, and I'm going to bump my index of refraction up to like, tw uh, not 100, sorry, <laughs> like 12 or something like that, and get uh, more of a coppery look. So you can see that's starting to look like copper there. Um, yeah, so I'm actually going to, again, this time we're going to duplicate the variation texture plastic, Control D, have it right here, and I want to plug the texture color into reflection color. All right, again, because I've plugged in this variation, I need to refresh Moto, which I'm gonna do in one second. First, next thing I'm gonna do though, before I refresh it, is I'm gonna drag these not between zero and 25, but because we're the, the metals are in slot number two, I'm gonna drag them between 25 and 50, right? Like this, and I'm gonna change these colors to metallic colors. So Moto comes up with a bunch of nice metallic colors here. You just Pick them from here, and you can always you know, change this to a list instead of a grid. Um, and you can just pick the colors that you want, like aluminum or uh, copper, my fave, the least valuable but nicest color. Gold, always a good one. Good standby for a metal. Some gold buttons. And lastly, but surely not least, we'll do aluminum. Did I already do aluminum? Did I do aluminum for this first one? I probably did. Um, for this first one, maybe, uh, whoops, go back to nickel. Nickel's a good one. Sort of a warm metal, nickel. Okay, so, and then I'm going to hit refresh. And I should have some nice metallic looking buttons there. In three, two, one, and Threadripper. Okay, <laughs> we've got metallic buttons now. Um, glasses next, looking pretty good. Let me just collapse these guys. So standard glass material, we'll go through the uh, go through the list here, make that diffuse color black, reflection color white. Um, see these black ones here, once I turn refraction color to white, they're gonna turn transparent. All right, looking good, got some transparent ones in there. And the index of refraction for glass uh, sort of depends on the type of glass. I can never remember, I always mix it up with water. I think water is 1.33, I'm gonna put 1.5, fine. But I'm going to change the refraction glossiness to like 0.8 to give it a little bit of a, you know, a, a, a frosted glass appearance. And the re reflection glossiness as well to 0.8, sort of a frosted glass. And I like to tint the glass color via the fog color. So if you look at this guy right here, if I actually, maybe I'll just do a render region, boom. Um, and turn the fog color to blue. Now I've got a blue sort of opaque looking uh, button here. So if I turn absorption distance all the way down to 0.01, super opaque, right? Almost a purpley button. And it's sort of counterintuitive. The smaller the absorption distance, the, the more quickly the light absorbs that color. So the denser that color is. So I put this back up to like 100, mil, 100 meters. It's, it's white, 100, 0.1, 100 uh, millimeters. It's, it's still pretty clear, right? So maybe 0.02 or something is good for sort of a cloudy, frosted looking uh, glass button there. And again, I can use my variation textures um, over here. Make sure to call this one metals. Keep your scene organized. And so yeah, I'm gonna duplicate my uh, plastic one and we'll call this glass. And I'm going to plug that into my glass fog color. So, whoops, and down here, there's the fog color to the texture color. And it's going black because I have to refresh it, unfortunately. So edit gradient, and again, these are gonna be between 75 and, uh, or 50 and 75. So let's move them up in here, between 50 and 75, looks good. I'm actually gonna just do, Three colors here, and instead of stepped, I'll just make it linear, and let's make some sort of nice pastel-y looking pinky, purpley stuff maybe. I don't know, like this maybe. Anybody? No? Good? 
Yeah, or make this one pink, maybe. This one purple. Something like that. I don't know, I like pastel glasses. And I'm gonna refresh to get everything. Refreshing the scene and then car paint and we're done. We're done, if you're still intrigued by how this is working. Okay, so I've got a bit of a pinky looking glass there. I can take off my render region, fill it in. Looking good. Okay, so now I've got to deal with the car paint ones. I'm just gonna do the same thing I've been doing and use the variation texture for the car paint base color. So here's my car paint, expand it. I've got a base color on there. I had red, but let's make it somewhere between orange and orange and red maybe. So let's take my glass, duplicate, call it car paint, car paint, and edit the uh, colors, RGB, make this, um, between 75 and 100 and I think I'm just gonna do two colors here blazingly hot orange and cherry red how cool is that okay awesome and plug these into my base color and refresh my scene because I'm adding the variation color refreshing for the last time so Looking good, I've got plastics, I've got metals, I've got glass buttons, and now I've got car paint buttons. And that was looking pretty cool for my flake color, maybe something a little more like that. Now I'm not super familiar with the car paint material. I'm getting a bit of a weird gray blob there, so I'm gonna screw around and figure out why I'm getting that. But you don't have to watch if you don't want to. I think you get the gist. Okay, so let's see. How do I, I wonder if that's a scale thing. Curious. I put that to point one, point oh one. Control, Alt, Return. Yeah, that was a scale thing. That's pretty weird that that's there. I'm not sure what that is, but uh, getting some nice looking, metallic looking flakes in there and here. I could probably up the flake scale a bit. Possibly, I don't know, flake scale was up by 10, why not? Flake density, lots of flakes, I like flakes. Uh, I don't know what the difference between flake size and flake scale is. You can see some big flakes in there now, so flake scale is maybe too big. Uh, two maybe. Anyway, looks kind of cool. I think we can call this guy finished. So recapping, switch material, the variation texture plugged into the input value, the type of variation source, depending on your scene. In this part, I have you know polygon islands, which is mesh part, and of course, I've got uh, my value gradient has to you know you need to have a gradient there, otherwise, you're just going to get the first material. You want all the materials zero to 100, and then you just plug them in the slots here, and you've got uh, metals and glasses and plastics and car paint. And looking good, I think I'm done. That was really long. That was probably way too long. Sorry. <laughs> I'll do the uh, physics simulation in another tutorial, I think. Yum, yum.